Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, again, my name is Suri Deitch, and I'm Dean of the School of Professional Advancement. And I'm joined today by some of my colleagues from SOPA, as we refer to it, Sheila Gold, who is the Executive Director of Recruitment and Admissions, and Amanda Hassan, who's the Director of Academic Advising, and then our colleague, Madison Duncan, who is behind the scenes um, moving the slides along. And um, I have this weird setup because my internet's been a little unstable where I'm on video, but then I'm also calling in with my telephone for the audio. And so my, um, the, the noises that are coming out of my mouth and how my mouth moves are not gonna be 100% in sync. Um, so I apologize for that. Um, but we're all, right, we're all making do these days. Um, so before I talk about the agenda for the webinar, um, you know, I just wanted to acknowledge that um, a lot has changed since we planned this graduate programs um, information webinar. And, um, and maybe a lot has changed since you signed up for it. And um, first of all, to reiterate how appreciative we are of the fact that you are able to find time in, um, in what might be kind of a hectic day, um, or maybe the opposite actually, but to, to join us. And I wanna talk a little bit about um, Tulane's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and um, I think it connects directly to um, having a conversation about our graduate programs and it's highly relevant if you're considering coming to school here. So, um, so I wanna start a little bit with that. The, um, the chat box, which is at the bottom of your screen is the way to communicate with us during the webinar and um and actually i would really appreciate it um we don't have um we don't have audio on and we obviously can't see you that's the way this webinar is set up but if you would just write something in the chat box and say hi i'm so and so and i'm from this place maybe you're in new orleans maybe you're in new york or some other part of the united states maybe you're in another country um, let us know where you are. That will be really helpful to us as we're um, as we're going through this webinar, and also, you know, just good to get to know you um, a little bit. So um, today is Thursday, right? Um, there's a, everything's blurring. Um, hi, Edward from Overland Park. Uh, Tulane made the decision, as many other universities have done, I think probably most at this point. Um, Tulane made the decision to go to remote instruction um, for the rest of the spring semester on, I think maybe nine days ago. And, um, and actually this week um, is a week when we've been preparing a lot of our faculty who hadn't been teaching online to start teaching online. Um, this is awesome. We're seeing, um, we're seeing people from all over the world. How exciting. Thanks for joining us. So, um, so in New Orleans, as it turns out, um, New Orleans is one of the centers of the pandemic in the United States. And um, we think that is because the virus probably started um, traveling around New Orleans during Mardi Gras and people had no idea that it was going on. And so, um, so people started getting sick later um, after Mardi Gras and, um, and actually proportionate to our population, um, New Orleans has the unhappy distinction of having the, um, the highest prevalence of um, COVID-19 of any place in the United States. And that may even become more intense because testing is not that widespread. So we're definitely in a really complicated position. And um, what I'll say about that is that, um, well, two things. One is that I think um, Tulane has done a really fabulous job 
of pulling out all the stops to help students through this period of time and to make sure that going to completely online instruction is successful. So that's one thing. The other thing I'll say is that um, the School of Professional Advancement, right, the school that you're here to learn about right now was um, uniquely well prepared for this transition because um, most of our graduate instruction was already happening online. And, um, and not only that, but um, living in, um, in a, an environmentally fragile geographic location, to say the least, we um, were really prepared for moving to remote operations because all the work that we do all the time uh, to get ready for, um, for hurricane season. And then on top of that, um, that many of our programs are highly relevant to the circumstances that we find ourselves in. And so we had a huge amount of expertise on our faculty and, um, and on our staff. So we don't know what the near future is going to bring, um, I think really anywhere in the world, uh, but we feel really good about Tulane and SOPA and um, our stability and our ability to support students um, through this time and um, and otherwise really any time and um, we'll be here. We're working really hard to make sure our students are successful. Um, we want you to seriously consider becoming a part of the Tulane community and um, and we also uh, when things happen like this it only bolsters our belief in the power of um, of education and in this instance of graduate education to help people um, advance professionally to to make you more competitive economically in um, in the job market and in a difficult and changing economy and um, and also just to to be better and more productive members of your communities. So um, we really appreciate again the opportunity to talk to you about that. So and thanks for every everyone um, telling us about all the places you are. So we have a lot in common, right? Because we're living in the same world. Um, but our circumstances are very different. And so many of you are working at home. Maybe some of you are in industries where the work has ended suddenly. Um, there are a lot of different, different circumstances and, um, and we think we have something to offer to, um, to all of you. So thanks for joining us. So now back to, um, back to the webinar and the slides we have put together which we did not adapt for today's session because we weren't exactly sure how to do that. Um, we have an agenda. We're going to talk about the school and what we offer. We're going to talk about um, supporting student success. Um, my colleague Amanda Hassan, again, is going to do that. Uh, Sheila Gold will talk about how to apply and um, tuition and financial aid. And then um, you can ask questions throughout but we'll also um, make sure to take a few minutes at the end to see if you have any more questions. So um, Tulane is a really unusual elite private research institution because um, serving working adults is deep in the institution's DNA. Tulane was originally founded as the Medical College of Louisiana. Uh, to fight yellow fever and other tropical diseases. And um, the school that is now SOPA, um, what our, our sort of our ancestors were created very soon after the founding of Tulane um, in 1834. And formal classes for working adults actually started in the 1880s. So um, that makes Tulane unique. I don't know of any other institution like Tulane with the reputation um, and the prestige of Tulane that has this kind of commitment to um, working adults and offering applied learning. 
So we're really proud of that history and we're really proud to be the, the current manifestation, which includes a lot of work done remotely and online. So we always want to say, you know, we, ha we have this slide that says we're online and on campus and you can do both. That's not actually really true at the moment, but I think it will be again pretty soon, maybe for the summer, maybe for the fall. Um, the vast majority of the programs we're going to be talking about are entirely online programs, although many of them have a New Orleans based component. Um, and then we have a couple of our graduate programs that are offered in a combination of um, online and, um, and on campus. But the point is that you can be a full-time or a part-time student at SOPA and that there's a huge amount of um, flexibility in how you go through your, through your education um, with us, whether that's in a certificate program or in a full degree. We have an approach to online learning at SOPA that is um, really high quality and engaging, and it combines what we call asynchronous and synchronous sessions. So um, in most instances, the members of a class will meet with the faculty member through um, a video conference once a month. That's the usual um, structure that we use. And then the rest of the work is typ typically done what's called asynchronously, which means that um, there are videos and sometimes online simulations. There are textbooks and articles that you read. Um, sometimes we use videos and um, interactive media that, we've, that are from other Places, most of the time we use things that we've developed in-house um, with our own production team. And we always have interaction um, every week, even if it's not the case that everyone's doing it at the same time. So discussion boards, group projects, um, you know, group projects that you coordinate by meeting as a small group of students online through Zoom. Um, the point is that, uh, it's a much, in some ways, a much richer environment in terms of content and ways to learn than a typical classroom um, class would be. And it really represents the, the, um, the best of what technology has to offer us at this point. And, and that's a lot. Um, it's, it's a really exciting time to be um, teaching and learning online. So this is just um, a picture of Canvas, which is what the platform is called, which is the online platform that we use to support learning at Tulane. Many universities use it. There are other platforms as well. We think this one is actually the best and the most intuitive. And what you see on the screen is a picture of one student's dashboard. Um, this dashboard is actually an undergraduate dashboard, right? So you can see all these entry level um, courses available. And if you become a student with us, which we hope you will, um, you'll have your own dashboard each semester. And um, whether your class is entirely online or it's some mix of um, on ground and support from online learning, you'll have this kind of dashboard that um, you can go to that shows you all of your classes. So I'm going to talk about our specific programs for a couple minutes and run through some slides that sort of group them by topic area. And um, again, you should feel free to ask questions. Here you can see where um, the programs are a mix of on-ground and online. Um, emergency and security studies was actually the first field where we started teaching online. You may be aware that our Homeland Security Studies uh, master's degree is nationally ranked um, for online security uh, programs. And we um, introduced about a year and a half ago emergency management and security management, which is more focused on private sector and corporate security um, as additional programs in this area. And then we also have graduate certificates. and 
Each of the graduate certificates is four courses, and the courses in the graduate certificate are what's called fully stackable, and that means that you can take the certificate on its own, um, but if you decide that you want to enter into the full master's degree program, all of the coursework will apply toward the master's degree, which is, um, which is a really great thing for students, we think, and, um, and makes it relatively easy to navigate our graduate programs. So that's emergency and security studies. Humanities and social sciences, we have one graduate program. It's called the Master of Liberal, Liberal Arts. And um, it is, you can't do it entirely online. You can do it entirely on ground, um, or you can do a combination. And um, there are two distinguishing things about the MLA program, as we call it. One is that it's been developed specifically for working adults. And so the, um, the structure, the learning objectives, the um, capstone project, are um, and the peer group, right? The group of people who with whom you'll be studying are all, you know, focused on working adults, are working adults themselves, and you know, as with all of our pro uh, programs, you know, bring their experience into the classroom. The second um, notable thing about the Master of Liberal Arts is that most of the faculty are drawn from the arts and sciences across Tulane, and they are among the most incredible and accomplished humanities faculty at Tulane in various fields, including religious studies and Shakespeare and um, um, Shakespeare and Renaissance era studies, other areas. And they teach in the MLA program because they love to teach adults. And um, it's, so it's an extra thing they do on top of teaching um, more traditional undergraduates and teaching in PhD programs. And we're really, we're really glad to have those faculty. Uh, so that's the MLA program. And then in information technology, we have basically two areas. One is IT and the other is cybersecurity. Those are um, obviously overlapping, but distinct in some ways. The master's degrees are, um, and actually the graduate certificates that you see before you, are really focused on people who have a background either in the IT industry or have um, studied in these areas. Maybe computer science as an undergraduate, maybe math or some other STEM field. And the point of the programs is to help people who already have a background um, be able to advance into senior management roles. And so that's what our IT um, graduate and certificate pro degree and certificate programs do. Uh, we don't have it um, advertised yet, but we're actually just about to launch another graduate certificate that's going to be structured a little bit differently in cyber fundamentals. And this is going to be a graduate certificate that will give you the technical background in IT that you would need um, to enter into any of these other programs or that you would need to work in another field um, that is relevant to IT and just have a stronger base of knowledge. So that's IT. Kinesiology um, is another area where we have uh, graduate programs. We have a master's degree, and MPS stands for Master of Professional Studies. So we have an MPS in Health and Wellness Management, which is focused on um, corporate wellness and um, the wellness industry in general, and then a, an MPS program in Sports Studies. And the Sports Studies program is really exciting we actually just launched it. Our first group of students is going through the program right now. They started in January. And this is a collaboration with the Center for Sport at Tulane, which is led by um, doctors and lawyers who are world-renowned experts in, um, in sport. As I've learned, it's sport, not sports, no S. And the uh, certificate programs 
are all stackable into the master's degree. So you can, you can take any of these certificate programs. Again, they're all four courses. We're actually just starting to work on one in sports medicine that will probably be launching maybe nine months from now, maybe a year from now. And you take two of the certificates. And then if you decide um, that you want the full master's degree, you just take two more courses. One is a survey course and one is a research methods course, and that's the sports studies program. Public administration is also a new area that we've just launched. We're really excited. Uh, Tulane has never had an MPA degree before, and um, we are currently recruiting for the MPA degree to start in fall 2020. And the certificate programs are available as separate certificates, again, each of them four courses, but also as concentrations within the MPA program, optional concentrations. So you can, um, you can focus on nonprofit and strategic philanthropy management or K-12 education leadership starting this coming fall. And then a year after that, we will launch economic development and environmental management. And um, again, we're really, we're really excited about the MPA program, um, both because we think there was a real need for it, but also because um, public administration education in general is an area where um, academic programs I would say are struggling a little bit to keep up with massive change in the field. Um, technology and data, um, really acute issues around racial equity um, that are coming up in a lot of different um, cities around the country in the United States. And, and then also, I would say, obviously, with the pandemic that we're undergoing right now, um, and these are all pressing topics. And the exciting thing about developing an MPA from the ground up is that you can immediately address the most current issues that are taking place in the field. Um, so I'm particularly excited about the MPA. Um, and if it's not obvious, I'm on the faculty. So I have a lot to say about it. So I'll, I'll talk about credits for prior learning and then, um, and then turn things over to Amanda Hassan. So one of the ways in which um, SOPA is, is uh, friendly to adult students is that we create many pathways where you can bring your relevant um, professional experience, your experience in the military, for example, or the National Guard, um, into your academic programs, and even in some instances, um, earn academic credit that makes it so that you have to take fewer courses to earn your master's degree. And so we have a, a process, it's called portfolio development and assessment, where we work with you to match your experience directly to the learning objectives of our graduate coursework and you can earn up to six credits or two courses toward your master's degree through this credits for prior learning process. Thanks, Suri. Um, so here at SOFA, we have a um, uh, excellent team of academic advisors and program directors that will be here to support you throughout your academic um, career here. Uh, we work with students and create academic plans to make sure that um, you know, you're following your coursework along as you should be. Uh, the faculty that work with you and your programs uh, you'll be taking classes with are, just as um, Sari said, are expert in the field. They, are, uh, they have a lot of industry experience and they bring that into the classroom to actually give you that um, experience that you need in terms of when you're ready to graduate. We also have a career counselor that will be here to assist you with all of your career needs and you know, making sure that you are up to date on uh, resume writing, doing um, very helpful workshops, getting you connected with uh, lawyers so that you can 
uh, be ready to hit the ground running when you graduate. You'll also have access to a tremendous amount of alumni and peers in your classes that will give you some advice as well and uh, hopefully help you along in your journey. I will turn it over to Sheila to give you more information about uh, the application process. Thanks, Amanda. I appreciate it. So um, once again, let me just say thank you to everybody who is with us today. Um, I know that these are really unusual times and um, you know, you all being here today uh, certainly demonstrates your commitment and your interest towards going back to school. So I certainly hope that um, we can reciprocate um, by letting you know that we are here for you. Um, we take our relationship with our students incredibly seriously. It's one of the um, values that I think we offer at Tulane. Um, and we consider our relationship with our students starting right now during the admissions process. That's something that I take um, very seriously. So um, the message that I want you all to leave with is if you have any questions during this process, we want you to know that we are available. Um, whether you want to give us a call, we're still receiving calls, um, even though we're sort of remotely working and everybody's um, staying safe. And of course, um, always through email. So um, please don't feel like um, we're in any way unreachable. Um, our application process is straightforward. Um, we, um, for students who have already started um, their application, um, it's an online application. For those of you who haven't started, if you go to sopa.tulane.edu, which is our website. There's a big button on the very top of the webpage that says apply and it opens up your application portal. Um, I would encourage everybody to go in there and um, it start your application. It's as easy as putting in um, your email, creating a password, and then you'll see the application. Um, we look for general information, um, demographic information, your birthday, you know, that sort of um, address. There is um, a $50 application fee, but as a thank you for students for attending this webinar, we waive that fee. Um, so when you submit your application, that fee will automatically be waived. You don't even have to ask us. We are capturing um, your name right now, so we will do that for you. We will need you to upload um, a current and valid um, government issued ID, which is generally a, um, you can take a picture on your phone of your driver's license and just upload that and attach it. And then we will also need transcripts from the schools from which you um, have received credit prior to applying to this program. Um, the one sort of shift that I would ask during um, these times when we are all sort of working remotely and making sure that we and our families are safe is if your institutions from which you've received credit prior to applying to Tulane SOPA offer you the option of sending your transcripts electronically please choose that option. Um, first of all, we get them more quickly. Generally, if you request um, an electronic transcript to be sent, we receive it within 24 to 48 hours at the most. Um, but there is a delay um, if you send it by US Postal Service. If you do, we will still receive them. Um, but I, I would, my one sort of shift is that I would encourage you to send those um, electronically. So once again, as you navigate the application process, if there are questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We, we enjoy hearing from students and helping them through the process. Uh, so I see a question from Edward. Um, do you want both undergraduate and graduate transcripts? And the answer to that is yes, please. Thank you, Edward. Um, we do have starts every semester. So um, because we are so focused on working with um, professional students, we know that life sometimes gets in the way and that you are balancing many responsibilities, whether it be work, family life, other responsibilities that you may um, have on your plate. So we offer um, a flexible start time. So we are now um, accepting applications for summertime. That deadline is May 15th. If you are interested in maybe giving yourself a little bit more time and would like to apply for the fall, that application is August 15th. And of course, spring, which is, um, would be 2021, that application deadline is January 1st. And if I can um, interject, Sheila, I see a question from Sarah Jane about 
um, four plus one applications. And so just to address that quickly, we offer what it's called a four plus one degree, which basically means that you can um, start working on a master's degree while you're still an undergraduate at Tulane in certain of our programs. Um, actually several of our master's degree programs. And so we have a four plus one application process. Um, you apply for admission to the master's degree when you are the equivalent of a junior in college in your undergraduate program. And um, we have the same admissions, um, uh, we have the same admission standards for the master's degree if you're entering a four plus one as we do if you're doing the master's degree separately. And if you are accepted into the four plus one program during your last year of college, you take a combination of um, undergraduate courses and graduate courses and two of the graduate courses count toward your bachelor's degree. Um, and then you can take an additional two graduate courses toward the master's degree at uh, reduced tuition. So um, you cut down on the time that it takes you to earn the master's degree and, um, and you also bring the tuition down some by doing the four plus one. So, sorry, just to clarify, um, so if, if you are applying for the four plus one for this fall, it would be fall 2020 graduate application that you would be looking for on our website. Great. All right. And then we see a question from Shelby about if you don't have experience, job experience in the master's program, are you at a disadvantage in terms of getting accepted? Um, you're not at a disadvantage in getting accepted in, as a general rule. Um, some of the programs focus more on professional experience or um, academic experience than others. So the IT and cybersecurity programs, um, you must have either the professional experience or the academic background to do the graduate level work. Um, in all of the other programs, it's relevant, but if you don't have it, it doesn't, um, it's not a disadvantage in applying. So um, sometimes um, if you have professional experience in the field, like this is the case in health and wellness and sports studies, um, if your GPA is a little bit borderline in terms of meeting our 3.0 um, minimum requirement, um, sometimes um, having professional experience will help you get into that master's program. Um, with the Master of Public Administration, we are looking for a mix of students from different kinds of backgrounds. And so we are accepting students who have extensive professional backgrounds, but students who don't have any background other than maybe volunteering. So it really depends on the program, but we definitely encourage you to apply and to ask us questions if you're wondering. And we see from Juwan that you already attended and applied and paid the application fee and we'll, we'll refund the application fee. Yeah, just um, at the end of this webinar, I believe um, my email address will um, appear. If not, I'm going to give it to everybody right now. It's S, like Sam Gold, G-O-L-D, at Tulane.edu. Um, that's also on the website. Um, if you want to find S Gold at Tulane, thank you, Maddie. Um, it's down at the bottom in the chat. Email me and I will waive that app. I will refund that application fee. We're happy to do that. We, mm -hmm. we appreciate you attending today. Um, so just a little bit of um, very basic information. It is always um, a consideration with students um, about how they're going to finance their education. Um, it's important for me to say that um, SOPA is very mindful of um, the fact that folks are working and that they have multiple responsibilities and we make it um, an intentional decision to keep our tuition and our price point um, lower than other parts of the university. Um, our per credit 
um, tuition rate for the summertime is, um, as you can see on your screen, $1,039 per credit. It will increase a bit come the fall for fall 2020. Um, it will be $1,078 per credit hour. Um, SOPA is eligible for students who are eligible um, to offer financial aid. And I would encourage um, those of you who are applying to go ahead and at the same time that you're applying um, to the SOPA programs, also start your FAFSA process. Um, that's a separate process from our office, but it also has multiple steps. So I encourage students to start it at the same time. Um, also available to students are federal grants and loans, and we are a military friendly school. So um, that's something that we're incredibly proud of um, and that I wanna take a moment to share with you all. Um, we have a 20% discount for active duty military and veterans, um, as well as um, public safety professionals professionals, um, first responders. And once again, I want to reiterate our credit for um, life experience um, uh, opportunity to students, which also um, effectively is a discount if you get um, credits through your portfolio, then those are six credit hours that you will not have to take and pay for. So um, this is, uh, so people have asked questions throughout, but um, if you have any more questions, you're welcome to ask them now. Um, I'll just say uh, the, the master's degree programs range between 30 and 36 credits. And so um, if you're thinking about the tuition or how long it's going to take, um, you should look at the specific programs you're interested in and feel free to ask us questions. Uh, but that's, that's the range, 30 to, so 10 courses to um, 13 courses is the, is the range. Any other questions? So um, just, to, just to reiterate, that is my contact information that you see on the screen. Um, please jot it down um, or it's also on our website, but we are at, at work, although not all in the same building, um, but we are happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you prefer a phone call, we're receiving calls as well at the 504-865-5333 number. And I, we see one more question um, that Maddie put in from the Q&A, which is about the um, financial aid and the Tulane employee waiver. And um, the answer to that is that, uh, well, first of all, all of our graduate programs are eligible if you are a Tulane employee for the, um, for the tuition waiver. And so in that instance, you, you don't go through the federal financial aid process. You just, you use the waiver. Um, all right, thanks so much again for joining us. Um, please stay safe and well, and um, we look forward to being in touch with you, and we look forward to seeing your applications for admission. Um, so have a good rest of your day. Again, we really appreciate your time. Thanks, everyone.